Like and subscribe right now, or you're gonna have terrible luck for the next week. When we describe an organism as carnivorous, most of the time we refer to animals. But as it turns out, the plant kingdom also has its fair share of members who feed on flesh. There are over 600 plant species that eat animals. These plants usually grow in poor soils that lack nitrogen in particular. So to supplement their nitrogen needs, they developed ways to catch and digest animals, especially insects. And today's video is all about the fascinating world of these rare plants. Number 10, the waterwheel plant. The first carnivorous plant in this video is quite a peculiar one for sure. First, it's one of the few plants capable of rapid movement, a very important quality in its survival. On the other hand, it is completely rootless, hence it needs to be in water throughout its entire life. It's also the most widely distributed animal-eating plant being endemic to Australia, Europe, Africa, and Asia, more specifically along bird migratory routes. To capture aquatic invertebrates, it depends on its leaves that grow in whorls of up to nine. Under ideal conditions, these whorls are produced at a very fast rate, with at least a new whorl developing per day. The trap leaves are lined on the inside with hairs that sense contact with any aquatic invertebrate. Once contact has been established, the traps snap shut in as little as 10 to 20 milliseconds, which makes the water wheel plant one of the fastest movers in the plant kingdom. Number 9. Sundews Sundews naturally occur on pretty much every continent except Antarctica. So far, there are nearly 200 species that have been described, making this genus one of the largest and most diverse among carnivorous plants. They also have some of the longest lifespans among plant-eating animals, with a few growing to last as long as 50 years. Sundews are known for their shiny, dew-like drops at the tips of their glandular trichomes. The name was derived from these drops that seem to mimic the morning dew and they play a significant role when it comes to the plant's carnivory tendencies. The drops are actually mucilage, a sticky substance that traps any insect unfortunate enough to land on the sundews. Such insects are usually attracted by the sweet-smelling secretions from the glandular tentacles. A trapped insect will later die either from exhaustion as it struggles to free itself or by asphyxiation as the mucilage blocks its spiracles. This can take about 15 minutes. After that, the plant secretes its digestive enzymes that break down the meal with the nutrients being absorbed through the leaf surface. To maximize their effectiveness, the tentacles are hypersensitive to detect any slightest touch by prey. Also, they usually bend towards the center of the leaf to bring the insect in contact with other tentacles for a smoother digestion process. Number 8. Corkscrew Plants About 30 species form the carnivorous plant genus Genlisia, commonly known as corkscrew plants. The most common characteristic among all these species is their habitat, which can be semi-aquatic or wet terrestrial. Most can be found across the continents of Africa, South and Central America. Unlike other plants in this video that attract and trap mainly insects above the ground, corkscrew plants are more focused on obtaining their shot of nitrogen from underground organisms like the protozoans. For this, they have underground leaves that have been modified into traps. The white traps have a structure such that a small organism can't get out once it enters. That's all thanks to inward pointing hairs that line the inner parts of the traps. Getting organisms to enter isn't much of a problem considering the protozoans are bound to find their way into this trap thanks to water currents. Once they land where they're required, the microbes are broken down by the plant's enzymes to provide nutrients. In addition to trapping and digesting small organisms, these underground leaves also anchor the plant and act as water absorption channels. Number 7. Rainbow Plants Rainbow plants are so named owing to their mucilage-covered leaves that shine when exposed to sunlight. In total, there are just about 8 species in this genus, all of which are native to the western parts of Australia. Although they bear a close resemblance to sundews, these two aren't related at all except for the fact that they both get particular nutrients from insects. And just like sundews, rainbow plants use the shiny mucilage to attract and trap insects. But unlike sundews, these plants cannot move their leaves. They depend only on the effectiveness of their mucilage to ensure their catch doesn't escape. Once prey dies from either exhaustion or asphyxiation, the leaves release digestive juices via sessile glands and the nutrients are absorbed thereafter. Number 6. Bladderworts These are some of the most versatile carnivorous plants on the planet as far as their habitat is concerned. While they thrive best in wet soil and fresh water, they can be found growing in pretty much every continent except Antarctica. 
there are a little over 200 species under this genus. Being carnivorous, bladderworts are the only plants to utilize bladder-like traps to catch prey. And the size of these traps, though pretty small, varies amongst terrestrial and aquatic species. Most terrestrial bladderwort traps are small in comparison to their aquatic counterparts. As such, these land plants can only capture small prey, such as protozoa and rotifers. Aquatic bladders, on the other hand, can capture larger prey, such as mosquito larvae, young tadpoles, and water fleas. The traps have a trapdoor that is populated with tiny hairs that act as sensors for prey. Once a potential meal brushes against these hairs, the trapdoor is triggered and the surrounding water along with the prey is sucked into the bladder. And once it's full, the door is closed. The whole process is swift and takes a maximum of 15 milliseconds. Since the water is not needed, it is continuously pumped out and might take as much as 30 minutes for the bladder trap to be ready again. Digestion of the prey starts immediately and might take several hours to completely dissolve, although some protozoans have been found to survive for several days. Number 5. Monkey Cups Monkey Cups is a genus of carnivorous plants comprising about 170 individual species. Being such a diverse group, they're endemic to different parts across the world, including China, Malaysia, Australia, Madagascar, the Philippines, and Indonesia. These plants are known for a shallow root system and climbing stems that typically average between 10 and 15 meters in length. From the stems, alternate leaves arise which, further on, give rise to tendrils. It's these tendrils that go through various stages of development to form the cups that are common in this genus. The common name monkey cups stemmed from an observation of monkeys routinely drinking rainwater from these cups. But usually, the cups contain the plant's secretion that serves as a trap for unlucky insects. These insects are usually attracted to the cup by its colorful mouth and nectar glands. The cup entrance is also slippery, which increases the likelihood of an insect traveling down to its ultimate death. The bottom of the cups has glands that not only suck nutrients, but also ensure the same are evenly distributed around the plant. Besides insects, some species have also been found to trap bigger prey, like young lizards and rats. Number 4. Cobra Lily Cobra lilies can be found growing naturally in bogs and seeps in cold running water. The plant is endemic to the U.S., growing specifically in Oregon and California. One distinct characteristic of this carnivorous plant is its leaves. They're tubular, with a swollen end from which two other pointed leaves emerge from. This gives the plant a resemblance to a cobra poised to attack, with the tongue out, hence the common name. Just like the corkscrew plants, cobra lilies use the lobster trap to capture insects. In lobster traps, getting in is easier, but there are a whole lot of structures that make going back an impossibility. Once the insect is safely inside, the plant leaves just a small exit point while curling in on the prey. As the insect frantically tries to get away, it is presented by multiple false exits that serve to exhaust it, to finally fall further down into the hairline tube that seals its fate as far as escaping is concerned. Digestive juices take it from here. Number 3. Butterworts The Pinguicula genus, or more common butterworts, boasts of about 80 species endemic across the Americas, Europe, and Northern Asia. Unlike the rest of the carnivorous plants in this video, butterworts don't have specialized parts in catching insects. They instead just use their leaves, which have certain modifications for this reason. There are two types of cells on the leaf surface, namely the peduncular and sessile glands. The peduncular glands release a sticky substance forming water-like droplets on the leaf, which attract water-seeking insects. Once prey lands on the surface, more of this substance is released, making an escape impossible. The initial shot of nitrogen from the insect triggers the sessile glands to release digestive enzymes that act on the insect to release the required nutrients. The enzymes here include ribonuclease, amylase, phosphatase, esterase, and protease. Fluids from an insect are absorbed by the leaf through the holes on the surface. Interesting to note is that there are some butterwort species that aren't carnivorous all year round. Some form carnivorous rosettes during the warm season and replace them with non-carnivorous leaves when the cold season comes knocking. Now it's time for today's best pick. Today's photo was sent to us by a subscriber, so if you come across a photo online and want to know more details about it, just send it over to us. We might even feature it in a future video. Number 2. Venus flytrap. Of course, the photo here is not the famous Venus flytrap. We're pretty sure such a plant doesn't exist. 
Obviously, it's a fine piece of some Photoshop geek, though we couldn't establish the exact source. Now to the Venus flytrap. This is probably the most known carnivorous plant and has some of the most advanced mechanisms among its peers. The trap itself is a pair of terminal lobes lined with mucilage at the edges. The edges of the trap are lined with hairs that are sensors to specific touch. That's why the trap doesn't snap when touched by just anything, say, a rain droplet, because the hairs can tell apart prey and non-prey stimulus. To trigger the closure of the trap, a strand of hair must be touched in quick succession or if it's two different hairs, the time difference between them should be no more than 20 seconds. This all serves to ensure the plant doesn't waste energy trapping useless stuff. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Number one. North American pitcher plant. The last animal eating plant in this video is no different from its peers. It's beautiful with the showy flowers being the reason why insects choose to come over. And that's when they realize what a grave mistake that is. The North American pitcher plant has developed special mechanisms that ensure an insect doesn't leave once it lands on its funnel like leaves, otherwise known as pitchers. But then how would the insects land exactly where the pitcher plant needs them? This is where nectar comes in handy. The openings of the pitcher are smeared with a sweet-smelling secretion, the type that any insect would want to jump on immediately and have their fill. But once they get it, they get a bit of more than they hoped for. The nectar in this pitcher plant is intoxicating, and once an unsuspecting insect draws in some, it slides down into the waiting trap below thanks to the slippery walls. As soon as it touches down, it's game on for the plant. Digestive enzymes kick in immediately, devouring the insect to obtain so much needed nutrients. 